This episode of IBJJF TV is brought to you by Shock Doctor. Hardcore protection, fearless performance. Defense Soap. Defense keeps you on the mat. And Nogi Industries. Since 2003, the real Nogi. You're watching IBJJF TV. Sponsored in part by the International Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Federation and BudoVideos.com. It's a chilly morning here at St. Thomas College. We're in Houston, Texas for the IBJJF 2012 Houston Open. Let's go inside and check out the action. It's said that everything is bigger in the Lone Star State, and this year's third annual Houston Open not only made a case for that claim, but confirmed it. With more than 600 competitors from around the world and some of the best players from top teams converging on H-Town, the 2012 edition of this Texas-sized event was not only their biggest to date, but a rousing reminder that the burgeoning tournament gets bigger and better every year. Guys, I'm here with Rafael Lovato Jr. Rafael, what brings you out to Houston today? Uh, well, basically, I'm here coaching uh, my students, um, getting the year started. You know, they're trying to get in their rhythm, get ready for all the big competitions coming up, and so I'm just here coaching and, and supporting all my guys. How important is it for you to be here at a relatively smaller tournament? Uh, man, this is what I grew up doing. You know, tournaments like this, e even way smaller than this. Uh, you know, it's hard for me to compete in these tournaments nowadays. I have so many students, and I just kind of focus on the more major ones. Um, but, you know, my students, they're a piece of me, and I, it's hard for me to miss them competing. So when they're out here, i got to be here supporting them and, and uh, coaching them and watching, seeing their mistakes, and go home and go back to work, you know? What do you think are some of the benefits for the competitor to get out here and, and compete? Oh, man, you know, it, it's all about learning, right? So you gotta, you got to get out there. You know, uh, try to play your game and, and see where you're making mistakes, see where you can be better, and just get the feel for it, you know, because a lot of guys are great in the academy, but then they step on the mat at a competition and, uh, and they just kind of fall apart, you know. They can't do the same thing they do at home. So uh, you have to get out there and experience the anxiety, the nerves, the pressure, and get to where you can control it and use it to your advantage, and that takes time, that takes practice. Um, so that's what these are about, you know, getting, you know, if you can do really well here, you're probably going to have a better shot at doing well at the bigger tournament. Whereas, you know, if you just go right into the bigger tournament without any lower experience, it might be rough. Man, uh, I came here to coach uh, some of my students. I have schools here in Texas too. So I brought some of my guys from, from Miami to compete here. And to see my guys from here competing, getting together, doing this, you know, like I'm, I always try to promote the relationship in between my schools. And, you know, nothing better to come here, start the year with the right foot and bring my guys to compete. Coaching and, or competing, which do you prefer? Man, I like both, truly. Like, I love to teach, so I have a lot of schools. I love to see my students. Truly, I feel more excitement on watching my students compete when, than when I compete, you know? For me, to compete it's like, you know, I've been competing for a long time. I love to compete. That's my life. It's, it, it's a different feeling, you know what I mean? But, you know, and my guys, is like, you know, like, it's my kids competing, doing everything I taught them. It's just a different feeling, you know? But I always try to compete as much as I teach, as much as I see my guys competing. And it's always good to show my guys, look, I want you guys competing. Look at me, you know? So I, I always try to be the leader, be in the front and having my guys follow me and going out there and put on a show. Why do you think people should compete? I don't know how people couldn't compete, you know? Uh, truly, like, uh, I'm a really, comp I, I, I'm a crazy competitor. I love to compete all the time. That's what drives me. You know, I always like to test myself, you know, and like not only to win or lose, you know, because it takes a while until you get on your stage that you get winning and winning, winning, but like, I think the competition part is just like to stimulate yourself and to test yourself as your training has been going, you know what I mean? Even though a lot of times we get to lose, you know what I mean? There's nothing that you can lose on competing, you know what I mean? You always learn, you, you're always going to be, you know, getting something better. You always can see, man, oh, look, yeah, I'm missing this on my game, I'm missing that on my game. So always, you know, compete, winning or losing, you're always gaining something. So everybody should compete as much as possible. If I could, I would, I would compete every weekend. I'm here with Brandon Wolverine Mullins. Brandon, what are you doing here this weekend? 
Uh, just coaching mostly. Um, actually, that's all I'm doing. I, I had signed up to, to fight, of course, in the, the black belt um, adult pluma, but uh, didn't have any competitors. So uh, not going to be fighting this weekend. Um, kind of upset about that. Wanted to get ready for Pan Ams. But just going to be coaching, helping the team. And we've already had some guys win today, which is uh, looking, looking to be a good day so far. What are the qualities of uh, a good coach? Uh, you know, I think you have to know your athlete. I think you have to know kind of, you know, what, what he's good at and, and what he's maybe what he's bad at. And uh, you got to help him, you know, stay confident and you got to get a good strategy for him. If you know the guy's, you know, wants to pull guard, you got to pull him inside and say, hey, man, if you want to pull guard, you got to do that immediately. You know I mean, don't don't run around and wait for him to take you down or he's going to pull guard first. So I think I really think one of the most important things is kind of that first move, whether it's going to be a takedown or it's going to be a a guard pull, you got to get that in your head because the person who gets where they want to the fastest is probably going to win. IBJJF tournaments are getting bigger and there's more of them around the country. What's your opinion of the IBJJF tournaments? Uh, I think it's great. You know, they always have the, 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 the top competitors there. Uh, th this tournament is already twice as big as it was the last year. And uh, I don't know if the gymnasium is getting smaller or if there's more people here, but uh, it's definitely cry more crowded than it was last time. A lot of blue belts. You know, we just had a guy, one of our uh, guys fighting, uh, has five matches in the blue belt division. So that's like at least like 40 people, I think. And um, I, I think it's great, man. They're, they're, they're doing a lot of things for the sport. Everything is organized. It's on time. You know, no, everybody's on weight. Everybody has the right gi. The refereeing is good. And like I said, the competitors are top notch. Guys, I'm here with black belt world champ and ref Hillary Williams. I see you out here refing a lot. Do you enjoy it? I love it. You know, it's it's definitely a way to stay involved in jiu-jitsu when I'm not able to compete anymore. Uh, I'm training only about three days a week, so this is a good way to get involved. And uh, I think it's it's something we need in the sport is passionate refs who are there for the athletes to make sure they get the best experience and the most fair one they can have. And how is IBJJF uh, as far as the tournament to ref for? Oh, it's fantastic. It's super professional. You've got breaks, you've got food. Uh, they really, it shows that they've been doing this for a really long time, and it's, it's an honor to ref for them, honestly. What would you say to the people out there that might not be sure if they want to compete or not? Um, you know, I don't think that competition is something that everyone has to do. I think that you should try it before you write it off. Um, it's really an exhilarating experience. It's a great time to check and see if your technique is is where you think it's at. And um, it's fun to experience because, you you know, whenever you're in a gym, you get your coach's game, you get your training partner's game, you get used to that. When you come into a tournament and you see something you've never seen before, not only is it a good experience for your jiu-jitsu, but it kind of opens your eyes to the possibilities of the entire sport. I think it's just a good experience for everyone. Guys, I'm here with Black Belt World Champ Justin Rader. Justin, I see you running around all over the place coaching your guys. How's the coaching going? Man, going really good. A lot of our guys are doing really good. We just had a couple of medal here uh, recently. Um, and, you know, the day's just getting started. we got a long day and a long day ahead of us tomorrow as well. So it's going really good, man. What are the qualities of a good coach? You know, I think, you know, not even, not only being able to coach the guys through different things or whatnot, but keeping their mind right, you know, is, especially, you know, in, in some of these bigger brackets, you know, uh, you can start to wear down and get tired or whatnot, and, and, and keeping that energy there for them as well, you know, and really giving that back to them as well, you know, keeping them calm, focused, you know, throughout the, some of those lo longer, bigger brackets, you know, so keeping their mind right, I think, is, 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 is key, Not you know, as well as being, you know, doing all the other stuff, coaching them through the match, moves, um, making sure the refs, you know, do their job as well, all that kind of good stuff. Now for some of the guys out there that might not think they're ready for competition, what would you say to, to motivate them to compete? You know, I would I would say do it on, on your own terms. You know, you're 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 gonna feel, you know, maybe one way or another about it. It's a learning process. For me it was like, you know, eight, nine years from you know being when I started really, really young, even in wrestling, before I really started feeling comfortable being out there doing all the things right, managing the match the right way. All of those things, it's a learned process competition. So I would say jump right in as soon as you're comfortable and can you know take each one as a learning experience. Gianni, you had an amazing performance today, winning your division and the absolute division. Tell me a little bit about how it went. Well, uh, I had six matches today. Um, I think I finished four of them. Um, weight class was obviously most important to me. Um, I fought a really good kid from uh, Lloyd Irving. He won the Worlds at Purple Belt 2010, so it was a big step for me. Um, I really love fighting him, and, um, and then had a little bonus in the absolute. I was able to finish all three guys there. Now, you were caught in a toehold for a little bit in your last match of the absolute. How's your foot feeling now? Well, it's not feeling too good, so I can imagine it's going to be 10 times worse in the morning, but uh, 
That's how it is. That's how it is in the sport. Just heal it up and I'll be good to go. What's the next tournament for you? Um, I'm going to do uh, Rob Constance's Ultimate Absolute in New York City. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's a lot of really good guys like Celso Venezes, Samuel Braga. So I know the cards are stacked against me, but I train hard. You know, I'm always looking forward to a challenge and I can't wait to go out there and put on a show. We see you at the Pan or the Worlds? Of course. That's always the goal coming into this year. All right. Keep up the good work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Rafael Mendez has been racking up gold medals in championships across the globe for Team Atos. In this fast-paced featherweight match, he faces Andre Montero from the Carlson Gracie team. Rafael feeds a collar across to set up the Bravo choke, and he secures a submission in less than two minutes. Also in the featherweight division, Guillermo Mendez faces off against 2010 world champion Pablo Silva from Gracie Baja. After both athletes simultaneously pull guard, Pablo gets an early lead with a sweep. From here on out, Guillermo will be the one racking up the points, starting out with this beautiful fake guard pull to take down. Pablo successfully defends an onslaught of chokes by Mendez, but finally succumbs to a baseball choke at 7 minutes and 30 seconds after Mendez had already racked up a score of 23 to 2. So guys, let me start out. This is the first time that you've done one of these smaller IBJJF tournaments. Why did you want to do this tournament? Yeah, because, you know, uh, actually the training that we are, we are doing in San Diego at Andres Academy is for the Pan Ams. But we decided to join the tournament like at last minute because after I fight here today, I could see many mistakes on my game. You know? So we, we, we decided to fight so we can see our mistakes. And now when we go back home, we can like improve. You know? We can fix all the, all the details to get ready 100 percent to fight the Pan Ams. Uh, this tournament yeah. is a uh, small preparation for yeah. the Pan Ams, for the big tournaments. And the, the, Pan Am, the camp in San Diego will be open for everybody, so if you guys want to join the, the camp, just send us a message and we will be very welcome. That's amazing for me to hear that you identified holes in your game, because watching as a spectator, you guys dominated, you both got submissions, Guillermo fought a world champ, and the score was 23-0 to zero before the submission. So I'd like to know what the mistakes <laughs> were, but you probably won't talk about those. No, so, yeah, like, even when we, we win the match, we can see the mistakes. You can't, like, ah, I won, so I have no mistakes, my game is perfect. No, you always have something to improve. I think this, you need to be very, like, open mind, you know, and be very careful about your game. So you always have something to improve. No, you always can get better. So uh, after we fight here today, like, I see my mistakes, you no. Know? So now I can improve. So because this, it's it's really important. You keep competing. You know, we don't like just join like big tournaments. Like ah, I'm gonna fight just the Pan Ams and the Worlds. Like sometimes yeah, you can't compete a lot. But I feel when I compete a lot, when I join small tournaments, it's like it's a good preparation for the big ones. You know? So always, if I can do, I will do it for sure. Yeah, I have been training. I have been fighting against Pablo. Many times he's a very tough guy, and I had a mistake. If you see the fight, I, I, I had a mistake in the beginning of the fight. He got a sweep, was 23-2, and this is good because now I can see what I need to improve when I play on top. Even if I pass his guard, before I had a mistake, so now it's 
on a, this is the point that I need to train. In one of the more talked about matches of the event, Ryan Hall from 5050 Jiu Jitsu Academy and fighting under Marcelo Garcia faced Gracie Baja's Bruno Amorim. Hall keeps a cautious Amorim at bay with his tricky inverted guard for the majority of the match. Amorim was penalized for stalling and the match was restarted in the center of the mat. With the advice of Rafael Lovato Jr. in this corner, Hall changes his game and almost immediately attacks with a triangle, but Amorim escapes. Amarim then passes the guard for points, but Hull answers back immediately with a takedown to make the score 3-2 in Amarim's favor. With only seconds left in the match, Hull takes the back of Amarim with a roll from half guard. With ankles crossed, Hull is not awarded points, and Amarim takes the victory with a final score of 3-2. In a lightweight match versus Albert Hughes of Genesis Jiu-Jitsu, JT Torres proves why he is one of America's best black belts. While keeping Hughes on the defensive for the duration of the bout, Torres secures his victory via bow and arrow choke in just over two minutes. In the lightweight finals, JT Torres of Lloyd Irvin meets Bruno Amorim. Looking to avenge his loss to Amorim in the finals of the 2009 Worlds, Torres sets up an early omoplata and turns it into a sweep as Amorim stands. Back on their feet, Amarim shoots for a takedown but falls right into a triangle armbar, earning JT the gold medal in the lightweight division. In the medium heavyweight division, Andre Gaval from Team Atos faced James Harbison from Team Lloyd Irvin. Harbison, a newly promoted black belt, has a win over Cobrini at the 2011 Nogi Worlds and is a 2011 brown belt middleweight world champion. Harbison showed some excellent guard retention, but it wasn't quite enough to stop Andre's smooth passing. Halfway through the match while attempting a Kimura, Andre Galval fell back to an armbar but ultimately lost the position. Galval continues his attacks with another armbar, but Harbison escapes before the match is halted due to a tear in his pants. In the closing seconds of the match, Harbison threatens with a loose triangle, but Galval escapes and wins the match on points. In a medium heavyweight final match, Andre Galval faced off against Brazilian top team's Diego Nogueira. Andre showed world-class athleticism and balance as he avoids most of Nogueira's sweeps. Andre sets his grips for a clock choke and Diego puts Andre on his back, but it's not enough to escape the choke that ends the match in under three minutes. And 
Andre, you had two amazing matches today. Let's talk about your first one against Jimmy Harbison. Uh -huh. Did he surprise you with his guard retention? Yeah, I, I knew already, you know, like uh, his guard is pretty flexible, you know, I knew that. And he kind of like, like to do what I like to do, you know, the uh, invert de la Riva. And I knew that I just, um, I broke his grips and keep like my work, you know, my footwork, you know. And uh, I was like, uh, I was like studying his game, you know, before. I knew like uh, the guy is like really, really flexible, really good guard, you know. And in the final, in the end of the match, like he, he just tried to got almost plot on me and then I was safe, you know, it was like the last 30 seconds. But uh, he's pretty good, you know, good, uh, very flexible, uh, strong grips. You know, and uh, I was ready, you know, so I trained for this, you know, um, with uh, Rafael Guilherme and with my students in San Diego. And uh, I'm really happy, you know, I did great, you know, the fight was 15 points, it was good. So. In your final match, you had uh, an upside down clock choke. <laughs> Is that a submission that you get in training a lot? Yeah, it's not like, uh, uh, because I'm just like, uh, I, I'm here like, because I need, you know, like, I want to come back, I want to fight the words, you know. And I don't want to like just prepare for the words. I want to like, I want to like uh, fight the, this tournaments like just to make me like feel comfortable, more comfortable, you know, get more confidence because I, I was like too much time without the gi, you know, training like uh, just MMA. But uh, now like I'm over one year back with the gi, you know, and uh, like on the first fight I try to armbar like Jimmy, you know, and then he escapes, you know, I lost the position so. I need to drill more of those things, you know, like kind of like to don't lose the position like that, you know. And like uh, on the clock choke, when I did the clock choke on the Gamonal, on the final, uh, I put the weight on him, but I kind of like I, I, I shouldn't don't let him like turn, you know. And he turned, but I was like really, really tight and I just keep squeezing. So, and then like uh, he felt the pressure and he tapped. So, um, and then it was like an upside down <laughs> clock choke but it was good you know so are we going to start seeing you more at these regional tournaments in addition to the big tournaments yeah sure like right now like i fought this just to feel more comfortable to fight the the pen ams you know uh, i like to fight the pen ams and uh, uh also the words you know so but right now like probably you know like uh if my wife comes to fight you know because she needs to fight too you know and I'm here for, for her and to coach like Rafael and Guilherme. And then like uh, I will fight for sure, you know. I can't be outside just watching, you know. I like to fight, this my life. In the heavyweight finals, Marcelo Burgo and White shows dominance throughout the match with a takedown, back take and finally an armbar to become the 2012 Houston Open heavyweight champion. In an open weight semifinal, JT Torres faces Carlson Gracie black belt Andre Montero. After an early guard pull by Montero, Torres gets a quick guard pass and finishes Montero with one of his strongest submissions, a bow and arrow choke at only 55 seconds into the match. Lloyd Irvin teammates JT Torres and James Harbison face each other in the open weight finals. Torres gets back control early on, but it's shaken off by a much larger Harbison. After a nice sweep from Harbison, Torres falls back to a knee bar where Harbison verbally taps at the four minute mark. Torres takes double gold, a remarkable feat for a lightweight competitor. JT, congratulations on the gold and the absolute and in your weight class. Thank you. But mainly I want to say thank you for both you guys for competing, even though your teammates, unfortunately, we see a lot of times teammates yeah. don't compete, but you guys did. How did you go about deciding that? Um, honestly, we just, we just roll like we roll in the academy every day. Did you like the fight? Absolutely. Great match. We went at it, huh? I sure did. Draculino, first place for the team trophy. Your team did very well this weekend. Third time in a row, and this time almost three times the points at the second place. I mean, it's not just my team, it's Gracie Baja's a team, uh, 
Professor Piano did a great job with his students. And my students also did, man, unbelievable. Uh, from all the belts, from the black all the way to the white, and kids and uh, masters, everything. And also other professors from Gracie Baja, you know, uh, all over Texas. It, it was good. I mean, it shows that, you know, Gracie Baja, first place in the Europeans, first place now, you know, you're coming back. <laughs> You're a great leader, coaching all these guys. I heard you screaming from the sidelines all day yesterday and all day today. Didn't matter if it was a black belt or a white belt. You were still coaching them with the same intensity. That's a sign of a great coach. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Upcoming IBJJF events include Pan Kids, February 19th. San Francisco International Open, February 26th. For more information on upcoming IBJJF events, please visit ibjjf.org. <laughs>